Hi, this is Scott Gerbe, and today we're going to talk about what was the very best and the very worst thing about Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. Let's jump into it. Uh, the very best thing about Dungeons & Dragons... Uh, the, the very best thing about Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition was a decade plus of survival. Alright? So, when was 2nd Edition? What years did it you know, prevail you know where where was uh, where was second edition from that perspective? All right, let's jump into it. So basically, second edition existed from 1989 to 2000. Second edition was owned by three companies. Three companies. Okay, it was owned by um, TSR, Wizards of the Coast, and Hasbro, and it is the only edition of Duns and Dragons that was owned by both by three companies. Very, very unusual time. So it lasted for 11 years. It is the second longest surviving um, edition to date. Every single, so every single, um, yeah, so every, uh, you know, third, fourth, and fifth, none of them have gotten uh, a decade the way first and second did. But second edition lasted for 11 years. Now, when I say survival, what I mean is that the game of Dungeons and Dragons survived. Now, you're, I'm, I understand what you're, you're like, survived? Well, how's that a big deal, right? Of course Dungeons and Dragons would survive. Uh, no, that is not correct. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons has been fraught with issues, was absolutely fraught with issues from 1974 all the way up, in my opinion, to when it is owned by uh, Hasbro. I believe Hasbro is the only owner of Dungeons & Dragons company-wise that has ever given it an actual stable life. Right? Um, TSR gave it a calamitously ruinous life where it was always on the verge of disappearing. Okay, it comes out in 1974. Uh, immediately, Gary Gygax's hubris, him saying... I will be the artistic lead. I will be the business lead. Terrible model for a business, right? And, and it ended in tears and flames, right? Um, was you know, was a problem from the game. So they had money trouble from the game. And the biggest issue was there was never an issue with Dungeons and Dragons getting money. There was an issue with Dungeons and Dragons almost constantly under TSR spending more money than they were making. That that so that that's one of the issues you got, right? So, um, so basically the money's coming in, but during second edition, right, Gary Gygax is already out. So what were the threats, right? Well, the threats were, were twofold. The eighties was the satanic panic and that extended even beyond 1986 when, um, when Gary Gygax left. So during, so, uh, all the way up until 1989, by 1989, the satanic panic is gone, but it's, but it echoed, right? And so one of the things that had to happen in the design, and second edition specifically did this, was it backed off of all the major cult elements within the game. And it said, we're really not going to deal with demons the way we've done before. We're really going to deal deal a lot less with these, you know, these different issues, right? And so it became much more careful and much more um it Dungeons and Dragons overall realized that it, 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 it existed in a world where there were, you know, mad moms against Dungeons and Dragons. Like that, that was a very real group. It was literally a group of moms who were against Dungeons and Dragons. And they, and they could pick up the phone and, um, and television, uh, you know, television crews would show up, right. And listen to them and, you know, as they went on a scree about Dungeons and Dragons. So Dungeons and Dragons in second edition really managed the issue of the echoes of the satanic panic. And so there were very real uh, forces outside of Wizards of the Coast, uh, outside of TSR, that threatened Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Now, what was the worst thing about... So the, the best thing about Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition is that everybody involved allowed the game to, sur to survive an entire decade, right? When it was facing threats from... In, from outside, which I just mentioned, and now let's talk about the, the threats it faced from the inside, which I'll explain right now, which is the worst thing about Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition. So what was the worst thing about Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition? 
here you go. The worst thing about Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition was the absolute horrible mismanagement of of settings. Okay, uh, and this really, you know, I I say horrible mismanagement, and it was. But I do want to be clear. I have much sympathy for all of the game designers and the people who worked on Dungeons and Dragons during this time. I'm I'm Monday morning quarter quarterbacking. I'm looking back and seeing their history, having read scholarly texts about Dungeons and Dragons history and saying, oh yeah, that was a huge problem. But in the middle of it, like it's hard to design something and see it from, you know, you don't get the future's clarity, right? So one of the things that they did with, with the settings, it was just terrible, was there were there were two problems with the settings. So one, there were multiple duplicative settings. Here you go. Forgotten Realms, Blackmoor, Mistara, um, Greyhawk. Four settings that have no functional differences. There is no useful functional difference, right? Now, the reality is Ed Greenwood was a much, much, much better um, you know, setting designer than Gary Gygax ever was. Um, and so Greyhawk could have been chucked right there. Mistara, for, Mistara is already chucked now, right? History has proven that was the lesser setting. Nobody needed Mistara. And Blackmoor... I, I'm fully up. I, I, to me, if the game forgets Dave Arnes and never forget, ever existed, I'd be happier. I, I think that guy had a couple talks with Gary Gygax before the game was on a phone, before the game was made. Gary Gygax got all the funding and literally wrote every word. And people are like, Dave Arneson was important. Was he? I, I don't think so. Right? I, I truly have no idea why his name ever got bylined with, with Gary Gygax. His input was minimal at best, in my opinion. All right, that's just my humble opinion, my two cents. Right, value it as such. Right, uh, so Blackmore, you could just chuck that because that's Arneson's setting that never belonged anywhere. So you have four duplicative settings, you know, three settings all doing the same thing, right? And they were splitting the buyer base. They were massively splitting splitting the buyer base. Then you have real settings that are really cool. Uh, you know, uh, with some problems, granted. Uh, Al Qadim, Oriental Adventures, Planescape, um, Dark Sun, amazing, really innovative, really cool settings, right? Granted, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying they didn't have problems, they definitely had problems. But overall, these were really, really cool. But the reality is, was there is no room for them. Dungeons and Dragons was still building its base and still growing momentum. And the reality is, I think if they had just kept Forgotten Realms and done nothing more and never made a single other setting, the game would be better off today. So, so uh, Dungeon Dragon Six Six Second Edition massively mismanaged settings, and it and it, it again it could have been the downfall of the entire game. The only reason the game survived is because it's such a unique product, right? And because there were brilliant people connected to it. That's my opinion. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.